You hear everybody in the short-term rental industry talk about hospitality. And a share that I want to give with you that I experienced over the last two days. If you can see that behind me, that's the Gulf of Naples. I'm in Sorrento, Italy. I'm going to take you kind of on a walk through downtown. My wife and I are here with our kids on vacation. And so two days ago, I did a private boat tour to Capri and just had an incredible experience. Absolutely incredible. Yesterday, we did a private boat tour to the Amalfi Coast. Same boat, same company, two different captains. And the captain on day one, his name was Lorenzo. Absolutely incredible. Probably one of the best experiences on any type of guided tour that I've ever had. He grew up on Capri. He knew everything about Capri. His mission was to make sure that we had the most incredible experience ever because he wanted us to fall in love with Capri. Like he, his passion is in growing up and, and living there. We could feel that, we heard that coming from him. We went to a restaurant that a friend of mine uh, recommended. It's very popular. It's kind of a touristy area, extremely expensive, $700 lunch, and it was horrible. The food was bad. We had really good wine. The views are amazing. It's called Riccio's, but the food was just horrible. He overheard my daughters and myself talking about that with Bria, and she said, I just want to get some great lemon spaghetti, which is her favorite thing and the dish that she makes at home. His brother manages a restaurant that's on the way back to Sorrento from Capri. We pulled over at a dock. There was two people standing on the end of the dock that handed him a package. And the interesting thing about them handing him the package, we had no idea what it was. We didn't even know that we were stopping. We just jumped in the water to do some swimming. Lo and behold, his brother, who jumped on the boat with us, pulls out a table, puts a table in the back of the boat with us. He had quizzed Bria on what ingredients she used and all that type of stuff. And he wanted to make us lemon spaghetti, just like she makes at home on the boat because we had a bad experience. It was one of the best meals that we've had in the multiple times that we visited Italy and it was on the back of the boat eating off of paper plates with plastic forks was more than just the sentiment behind it it was incredible how good it was but that's the type of hospitality that Lorenzo delivered on day number one on day number two which was yesterday the Amalfi Coast we had a captain that was not so good she wasn't bad at all but she didn't have the hospitality that Lorenzo had she didn't have the passion that Lorenzo had Lorenzo had everything ready for us. He had ice cold Peronis. He had every single thing that we could imagine. He had snacks. He was ready with floaties. He asked my daughters their favorite music. He was cranking Taylor Swift on the boat for them. All that type of stuff. We never even got her name. All she did was drive the boat. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's not good enough anymore, especially after the bar that had been set the previous trip. So if you think about that, if we only have an experience with her, we'd never use that tour company again. Also, she's being compared to what Lorenzo delivered to us the day before. You and I know as business owners and investors in the short-term rentals that we are always going to be compared to the previous day. That's one of the reasons that when you are building out your listings, and I'm doing one right now, that you have to understand the marketplace and what the shortcomings are. And when you do, you have to accentuate that and show that in your listings. Because if I came back again and I wanted to book another tour, I'm always going to think about the Amalfi Coast tour. More than I'm going to think about what Lorenzo delivered for us. He was great. He was incredible. But the customer always thinks about the negative experience that they've had. And that's something that a lot of us don't focus on and we don't really think about. So I want you to do some research. I want you to go through your comps, all the competitor listings. I want you to go through all of the comps and I want you to see what they do poorly. What do they not have? What amenities do they not have? Literally go and request an Instabook, especially if you're not approved with five-star ratings. Look at what their ratings are. This is one of the reasons that I want all of you to take and copy all the reviews. Have a VA do it if you're too fucking lazy. But Take all the reviews for all your competitors, drop them into ChatGPT, and literally give a prompt to ChatGPT to give you the top three positive sentiments coming out of the reviews and then most negative three. And then this is all about understanding the before and after. Because really what we're selling is our job, if we want to get that customer acquisition, if we want to get that booker acquisition, we really have to focus on what their objections are. And if you've never been through sales training, that means you have a problem on top and you have a solution on bottom. And if you can go through and nail three solutions to the top three problems in that marketplace or for that prospective guest, that's great. But if I come in and they bounce from your listing to mine and I nail five, I'm most likely going to win that business. So this is why it's absolutely critical to understand hospitality and how it ties to the consumer buying experience. Nobody talks about this in our industry. It's not just about listing optimization. It's not just about social media. It's not just about Facebook ads. This is about understanding how people are buying on platform and off platform. And you need to be a salesperson. You need to understand the objections that your potential guests have before they hit your listing. If you can nail this, you will absolutely crush. I'll give you a really quick example. If you know my portfolio, I've got places all over the country. I'm in North Carolina and Banner Elk. I've got a large place. I've got a small place. I'm in Whitefish, Montana. 
I've got a three bedroom on the river that everybody's seen, and I've got a small two bedroom condo. I'm getting ready, I'm under contract for a $3 million purchase on seven acres, a massive property. Almost every place I have small and large, that way I can take care of both buyer personas. I've got blue collar Bill nailed, and I've got wealthy Wendy nailed in every single market. And the higher end properties take care of the smaller end properties when we are staying there. But I know the objections are different, and blue collar Bill is much more price conscious than wealthy Wendy is. So I'm selecting the properties based on the buyer persona. I'm designing and furnishing the properties based on the buyer persona. I'm optimizing the conversion, those objections, the problem, solution, problem, solution. And I literally make a list when I get done doing my research and an Excel spreadsheet. And then I answer them as I go through my listing in the images and also in the description. So I wanna go back to Banner, North Carolina, traditional old school vacation rental market. There are still a lot of properties that don't supply linens in that market. And the Outer Banks, two mega beachfront properties are. There's a lot of people that charge for linens. I mean, shit, even one of my former mastermind members, we you know brought 50 people to two of his houses side by side for a mastermind and wanted to charge me for linens. I said, I'm not fucking paying for linens and you need to stop charging 30, 25 to $35,000 a week. And then he wants another thousand dollars for linens. That's just insane to me. You know how much business you're going to lose without even what? knowing it? when you're trying to charge for linens for that. So that is something that I accentuate in both of our properties is that we use the term fully loaded. We include linens, we include fully loaded kitchens, we include shampoo, conditioner, all the things that you and I take for granted is super host. But the guests in these markets, they have those objections. Well, we've got to answer them. That's part of the sales process and that ties into the marketing that you're doing. If you nail this, you will win. This is one of the big secrets of how I ascend to 52% above the 90th percentile of AirDNA and SDR Insights. And if you can continue to do this stuff as I educate you here on the YouTube channel, you will be able to do that as well. You'll get a higher conversion rate, but it all ties around you doing the research, understanding your buyer persona that you're trying to attract. If you're just putting up a listing based on what you want, and you're not really doing buyer persona conversion optimization, then you are not going to be able to max maximize your return on investment. Nail this and watch you ascend to that top 1% where I live every single day. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. I'll definitely be answering your questions. Number two, make sure you smash that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video right here above me.